Okay. Um, I wanted to talk this week about something uh, where the producer asked me to talk about. There was an Adam Godel that we both knew, me and Yeshua Mayer, the producer, his name was Abraham Tzimmer, and we both knew him, we both heard a few shirim from him. Until today, I still remember one of a stickled third that he said. And they wrote about him this week in the Mispogum magazine. I didn't see it yet. I mean, I don't know if I will see it. And uh, because that he asked me to talk about him, but I'm going to talk about a general union that can bring to Ellis to the listeners. But before I start talking, I want to be Moshe Modol if Nathan. I don't have a computer. I don't have an iPhone. I have no connection to that world. It's all the producer that he's keep putting it out. I'm not on that level, Baruch Hashem. I don't go down to that level, especially of the comments. And and I have nothing to do with it. It's just that he's asking me, I'm doing, is the breast for the Rebbe said, uh, they said on him, it wasn't his derech to be misakish, to, uh, to be stubborn. So he asks me to give a talk every week, so I give a talk. So I'm going to well, say like this. Rabbi Kaplan, your students in America also want to hear you. It's not only... That's how it started. Uh, I, I'm not so sure. Kaplinsky and uh, Heimoiser. I don't know how much they listen. Maybe they do. It started with them. started with two, but I don't know. And, but, uh, but again, uh, nobody should be hoshed to me that I have a computer. I don't even have a computer at home. So, um, what I wanted to say is that I knew Reb Chaim Zimmerman before his grandson Schneier was born. I'm pretty sure about that. I remember that there was a Yaakov Moshe over there. In the, well, he lived in your building in Bait Vagan, no? Oh, right. And when he came there to show, the first place he lived was in our building in Rechov Bait Vagan, 86. And we heard that there's somebody, a big genius that lives upstairs from us. Me and my brother went to meet him, and we saw him. Now, what I want to—I want to tell you, people, that he was a tremendous genius, and he was one of the Gdole Hador, definitely. He could have been in the same place where Rav Shach was. Only thing is, he made me sugar, and he didn't make it over there. Now, um, he he knew probably knew Claude Perakula. I don't know if he knew every Sif in Shulchan. I don't know if he knew every Shach in Chosham Mishpat in your day, but he knew a tremendous, tremendous amount. He once said on himself that he opened up new sugis. I heard him say those words. I opened up new sugis. And he gave an example of the figure of Chibas HaKodesh in the Gemara and Tzvachim and the Gemara and Pesachim, the Eitzim and Lovona and Mekabotum, even though it's not an Ochel, Chibas HaKodesh is Machshir Lekabotum. And I looked in his safe of being a I did see that he has a little thing on it. Now, um, uh, also, also, I remember that he was he was a very geschmack person, a very geschmack. I don't know how you translate that into English, the word geschmack. There was always, uh, maybe you could say, there was always a liveliness around him. There was always a simcha around him. And and you could feel that the simcha that was around him was a simcha sator. It wasn't a simcha of late sonar. Um, it, it, it was a simcha that came from Tur. Um, again, as I said, he was a, not only that he was a bucky in Shas, he was also a bucky in the many, many farm. He claimed that he knew physics, mathematics. I don't know. I'm not a mandoma on it. Uh, my, my 
my son, which he's a, he is a physicist, he's Mizalzo in, 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 in that uh, idea, even though he didn't know him. My son usually knows what he's saying, but I don't want to offend the Talmud of Rab Chaim, which they probably think he was the biggest physicist in the world, so I'm not going to go into that. Also, another interesting thing about him was if somebody came to him and, and made out that he knows how to learn, he acted as if he knows with a certain guy that I know, so he would put him down and he would put him in his place and he would show him that he doesn't know how to learn. But if a simple person came and he said something, he was very mechav at him and he, he got excited about something that a simple person said. And I once saw an old yaki that he came to him and he, they had a seder he learned with him, I think, once a week. And this old man said, uh, so we're going to learn next week, next, uh, I don't know, let's say Monday. Abraham said, yeah, okay. So what time? Five o'clock. So he said, and you'll be here. He said to Rab Chaim, and you'll be here. So they all started laughing. And the man, the, the Yeki, he thought that he sang a, a hilarious joke, or you're going to be here, because Rab Chaim, uh, maybe he didn't keep time so much. So he made it as a joke, are you going to be here? But the Chaim laughed as if it was so funny. In the middle of laughing and being excited, he says, he plays a good chess. He plays chess good. He, he also, he liked people who were good chess players. He considered himself also a good chess player. I saw him lose a chess game. But... Uh, uh, and that was one of the things. I'll go put him, what I want to say is, he's definitely one of the Gdele Ador. Now, when I, when, when I went then, I was young, and, and it was, I was very impressed, and, and I even felt a certain inspiration when I went to him about uh, what you could, what learning could, how, how far you could reach when you learn. But the years when I was, uh, this must have been 40 years ago, even more, maybe 45 years ago. And the years went by, and a person gets older, and you go through different shyness in life and different ups and downs in life. And you start seeing that it's much more serious than that. A prime man of my life, the Milo with the Novi Hoshea says, Kinar Yisrael Vohavev. Hashem says he loves the Klaisa because they're like a Nar, they're like a youngster. They're excited. They're excited like a youngster. Uh, they said in Kotsk, they used to say, a 90 year old person, when when he's a, when he's a true of it, Hashem. So, so when, He's, he's 90 years old. Wait one, one sec. Let's go, Rabbi Kaplan. So, so I'm saying, Rabbi Chaim had this, this special quality, this special Jewish quality of, of Nar Yisrael. He was like a youngster. In court, they said that a 90-year-old person, when he's a true of it, Hashem, he's like three, a younger light of 30 years old. Three 30-year-olds. He's still fresh. He's still excited. Wow. But I'm feeling today. He was okay to the rocks, Hashem. Oh, yeah, he learned the touches. He's excited that he learned the touches. He still has the excitement. Or from a vart. Yeah, from a vart. To get excited to hear a new insight, a new word, he gets a, a a true a true Jewish person, an authentic Jew, gets excited from hearing a word. And Rabbi Chaim was like that. You, you could say one little little thing, uh, as long as you didn't come with a guy there. So you could say one little thing, and he would get excited. Oh, you're talking like a lambdin off. Very good. Or even if you said a good joke, he, he would make a note of it. He would say something. He would praise the person. He was excited about things. And in learning.
learning. Of course he was excited. And when he talked to learning, he was very, very excited about it. And when he said a shir, and the same, and like so on. That was real kind. There's somebody, I have a good friend, his name is Menachem Solomon, that he was a lot by Rup Chaim Zimmerman. Also, many years before all these youngsters were there. And until today, we we meet like once or twice a year, we meet in, in Ramat Slavo when I go to my sister's. It happens sometimes. I go for a simcha, for a Shabbos. And, uh, and I meet him there, and then we... we Go back to those old days when we heard from Rab Chaim, and he says over a yeah, certain memory that he said, and he still says it over with, with he says it over with excitement about how what the mesikus, the sweetness that Rab Chaim had, and the way he talked, and the way he he said things, and the way he was excited about things. The swarm they wrote are a very great swarm of. It's on a different caliber. All the Rashivas today, it's, it's not on that level at all. I want to make sure to point out over here. What, what do you he mean? It's not, it's, not it's, as great as Rabbi Kotler. What? What do you mean he's not on that level? That he's higher, he's lower, he's just on a different wavelength? What do you mean exactly, Rabbi Kaplan? He was not. As a genius as a Baron Cutler. No, but all the other Rosh Hashivas, he was. Uh, he, 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 no, and the other Rosh Hashivas, I'm saying, he's, he was in a different caliber, a different league. A was. higher league or a lower and, league? Well, what do you think? I don't understand. No, I don't understand either. Well, well, don't, okay, but don't let the whole world know that you didn't understand. Obviously, mm -hmm. when you say in the yeshiva world that he's not on that level, you mean much higher. Oh, oh okay. Do you think of me? I've got four listeners. Anyway, so, um, uh, so what I'm saying is like this. That, that's what Reb Chaim was. Uh, but but I, I want to talk about the next generation, about the Hemshech. Rab Chaim was not Mamid Talmidim Hagunim. I'm afraid it's sad, but that's what I have to say. What do I know about his Talmid? I don't know anything. I don't mean Rabbi Leofield, that's not what I mean. I mean the younger generation, and from and I'm only saying it from the little bit that I saw. I didn't see too much. I didn't hear too much, but from the little bit that I saw, he made a tremendous mistake by telling the younger generation, giving over the message that the main thing is brilliance. The tachlis is to reach brilliance. The Dachlis is to say brilliant Torah. And that was, and and the youngsters heard that and they didn't understand, they didn't take it the right way. And, and, and tremendous mistakes have been made. Not only in learning, but also in years your mind. The truth is, I was thinking many times to myself, when we come to the next world someday, are we gonna find the same thing that we find over here? There's such a thing as a yeshiva shalmalo, sifta durakia, in today's parsha, your mark says, kamif lagibim and sifta durakia, if there was a suffolk, the Baharas came before the Ser Lovan, and the Ser Lovan came before the Baharas, what's the thing? And the Masif Tadarkiyas argued with Hashem. Is it the same base matters that we have now here in this world? I might, it, it, might, it might be that it's not. It could be that over there, the, and I think I'm right, over there in that base matters, they measure how much Omo Vyagia did you have in this world? How much Monsieur Snafish for Torah did you have in this world? How much was your, did you think when you learned, I want to get close to Hashem through my learning? Uh, Rabbi Kaplan, we're going to take a break now, if it's all right with you. Thank you. Uh,